I've known Annie for years, um, been part of my life for a long time. Wonderful to be able to deepen into spirit and consciousness with her uh, on that ever-growing spiral, and I'm really looking forward to hearing from Board of Trustees member Annie Steele. Thanks, Bill. Sure. You're in this talk a little bit, so. <laughs> All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. When we decided to do the talks, well, it was Breen's actually, it was Breen's suggestion, which was a great suggestion because the purpose was for us to be a part of the community, but another big part of it is that we wanted to give back to the ministers by giving them time that they could relax and just enjoy our celebrations on Sundays. So here we go. Uh, the talk title was Balancing Act, and I think if you look every week on the website or get the announcements, it's always like some little cliche topic or, you know, I think the titles Bill picks are awesome or Dave. They just like, they pick these like catchy things and I'm like, oh, what can I pick that's catchy that's like <laughs> relates to what I want to talk about? So balancing act. And it kind of also goes along with um, something another community that I used to be a part of used to say all the time, which is fake it till you make it. So I'm not really good at balance. Um, or flexibility, and I've kind of always been an all or nothing person, just from the start. I like very intense, and um, from birth I'm Catholic, and as a teenager I was like, I went to daily mass, and if they would have let me, I would have become the Pope. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, I wanted to be a, mi uh, a missionary, um, and then I think, I don't know, I was like maybe 16 or 17, I read this book about, uh, I was always reading some kind of self-help book, um, even as a teenager. Um, I read this book about sugar and how bad it was for you, so I was like, I'm never going to eat sugar again, and I swore it off for like three days. <laughs> um, <laughs> then after that, um, I really got into the environment, and I was like, um, I just moved back here from Minnesota. Um, I had this really awesome car. It was a Ford Taurus station wagon. Um, it was an answered prayer. It was free. Um, but I wanted to be an environmentalist. And I swore I was going to be the best tree hugger ever. So I gave my car away. And I was like, I'm going to ride a bike everywhere. Um, so I really never had a desire for balance. Um, I even got a tattoo of a candle on my calf. It's quite large. It's a candle burning at both ends. And I, I proudly displayed that as a teenager. So, um, and I'm not saying that's bad that I was, you know, all or nothing. It just, my priorities have changed. So, when I first started a new thought, I, I really didn't know what I wanted, per se. And, um, just a word to the wise, you might want to figure out a little bit of what you want before you start praying for random things, but because <laughs> uh, I think Bill always says it, maybe Dave, I don't know, about the Amazon, you, you know, I want to pray for just this wonderful gift, like, well, what's going to show up? It's a huge warehouse, you know, I don't want jewelry, I, well, I like my pearls, but I don't want jewelry, I'd be more likely to want some running shoes, so you kind of have, have to have a little bit of an idea, but I thought like a good place to start at the time was okay i'm beginning this and bill always says first practical thing to pray for maybe to boost your faith muscles like for a parking spot the beyond limits class and it was an amazing experience and in that class i actually end up finding my i would say career mentor um so there was this woman in the class lori and i just you know I wanted what she had. She had grace and determination and ambition and um, I just, I really liked her a lot. So I started to talk with her and learn from her and um, I had this really crazy job. I was selling cars and I was working a million hours and I, believe me, I love selling cars. It, it, it's a job for intense people. Like I said, I'm intense. So I was killing it and my first month I made just a tremendous amount of money and I was just like, I really love this. 
but I love my kids too. And when you sell cars, you don't get to see your children. So I'm like, I have to find some balance. I have to find a job that actually allows me to enjoy my family and my parents and my kids and my nieces and nephews. Now I was thinking job, completely was thinking job. But Lori recommends, why don't you go to school full time? I was not thinking student and pauper. I was thinking, you know, dollar bills. And uh, so I quit my job and I went back to school full time and it was the craziest decision I think I've ever made. Um, but like the class all worked out perfectly and aligned and the money showed up to pay the bills and everybody started calling me Money Annie. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm like, what? I don't, I don't know how this is happening. But I just trusted in this process that everything was going to be taken care of. And there really wasn't much balance though still. I was doing homework all the time. I'm still doing homework all the time. Um, and I lost track of fun. Um, I'm very like regimented person. I'm like, let's get up, let's have tea at 7.57 and then we should maybe take a walk and have eggs with spinach and some <laughs> wheat toast because that's better for your blood sugar. Um, <laughs> so I wasn't having much fun. And I was watching somebody that I loved struggle with um, trying to have everything and fumbling through it and being overwhelmed. And I, came, I went to Bill and I said, you know, I'm watching this person I really love try to do everything. And I don't know what to do. Um, I don't want to watch this person be in pain and anxious. And he told me a little story about um, plates. You know, if you're spinning plates on your hand or get, you know, multiple plates are spinning on a stick and you can spin five and then you can spin six, you can spin seven, eight, nine, and you got them and you've had that mastered. Well, what happens when you can't spin ten but you try to spin ten? They all fall. And I was like, wow, how can I tell this person, you know, they're spinning 10 plates and it's only going to last for about a split second and everything's going to crash down. And um, as a parent, I could just say, no, you can't spin all these plates. They're all going to crash. Um, but I made a recommendation and lots of prayer work and, and my daughter put down that extra plate and um, I thought, why does she think she can spin 10 plates? <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't know about balance, and neither do I. So that's why I started praying for balance. And that was like a answered prayer for clarity that I actually didn't pray for, but thank you, Bill. Um, <laughs> so anyway. That's when I realized I was just always going too fast. Um, and the Beyond Limits, the school, everything was going along well. And I started praying for, um, praying for balance, like I said, and praying for master's graduate school. I wanted to be paid for. You know, that was my prayer. That's what I had going, that every time I would think about praying, that's what, I'm gonna be paid to go to school. I'm sick of being a broke student. I want to be a paid student. So um, I applied for a program that didn't pay you to go to it. Um, <laughs> kind of didn't make any sense. And I got waitlisted, and my heart was broken. And that program was like one of the most intense medical programs that you could enter to in the country. It was a two-year program to be a physician assistant. And I'm like... Why am I applying to be a PA when I'm trying to pray for balance? You know, my, my thoughts and what I wanted, it really wasn't in line. And um, I didn't get in. I got waitlisted and, and I didn't have a choice. So I guess um, my mom says, God did for me what I couldn't do for myself. Um, and I wasn't too happy about it. So I 
randomly heard about this fellowship. I decided to apply for it, and it was um, a program that was going to pay me to get my master's. And I was like, this is what I wanted. And I went to the interview, and I got the, pro got the fellowship, and I'm like, I have everything I want now. A beautiful wife, children, everything's great. And then I thought, this program, in the title, it's like, intense one-year program. And I'm like, yes, I'm getting paid to get my master's, but once again, I'm out of balance. I'm never going to see my kids. I'm never going to see my wife. I don't know what I was thinking. I bought a puppy. I'm never going to see this puppy. I told you, I'm not going to balance. So over a few weeks of talking to Bill and praying about it, I said, you know, I, I really do want balance. Um, I know this was an answered prayer, but I don't want that anymore. I don't want to go to this fellowship and do something really intense. I do want my master's degree, but I want it at a nice pace. I also want to be paid to go, which is going to happen, but I'm going to do it at a nice pace. So um, I rescinded my acceptance of the fellowship a few weeks ago, and my, I was just like, oh, my heart's broken. Um, but when I kept coming back to the balance and how I felt inside, I knew that it was the right decision. Um, and one of my in-laws was, she was telling me, you know, you have a new marriage. You can't dive into some crazy accelerated program and build the foundation of a successful relationship. And that's kind of the whole point of the talk. Balance, but you cannot have everything. I guess it's not really like new thoughty to say, but you can't. You can't. I mean, I guess you could, but where would you put it? Where would you put it? I mean, I have a one-bedroom house with a little den that I live in. I, I don't know where I would put it. But you can have what you want. So the, I guess, for me, is figuring out what I want. And I want that balance. I want to enjoy time with my munchkins and watch her dance recitals or catch her when I come home in the afternoon after she's done school and she's spinning around and shouldn't be jumping and frolicking on her sore ankle. <laughs> I want to be there for that. I want to see that. And, you know, that's part of my answered prayer. I kind of wasn't planning to graduate and then not have a job. Um, <laughs> so, now I'm about to graduate in, I think, 42 days. 41 days, something like that. And I, I don't have a job um, yet. yet. Yeah. But, hold on. Wait, Bill. It was coming. It was coming. I thought more about balance and what kind of job am I going to get that is going to have balance. So I started talking to everybody I knew in the medical field, um, even people I didn't know in the medical field. My dad was mad. Somebody was in the hospital. I was there at the hospital. I'm talking to the doctor about their job. And my dad's like, I'm here for care. <laughs> I didn't want that working. But I did. I just started to take in all the information. and. Um, I was supposed to go away recently. I was supposed to go to Africa. And um, like two days before the last day to change your classes for school was for school, um, my Africa trip got canceled. And I was like, what the heck? <coughs> and so then I was kind of like thrown in on this group trip with the nurses. They were stuck with me. And uh, we went to Guatemala. And I spent 10 days of very intense activity but 10 days was enough. And um, in that, I talked to some nurse practitioners and I found out that there's a path through medicine that you can go part-time. And I knew nothing about that. But the answer prayer was, I got to spend time with these people so unexpectedly and find out a whole nother path that now I'm looking into that has balance for my entire family. And uh, I'm pretty sure if um, I end up with this awesome job that I applied for that when I was looking at the qualifications and the hours it was all day shift that's what I want no weekends that's what I want so I can have what I want I'm gonna have what I want but I don't want everything all at once anymore I want what's here right now 
and the answered prayer, I have an interview on Tuesday. Um, and if it's a good match, I'll get that job. If it's where I want to be, if there is balance. If the manager says to me, you're going to be required to do overtime in a split second. No, thank you. You know, I didn't, I already worked in real estate for 10 years, driving myself crazy. And New Thought allows me to reach inside and find that I can have everything I want. And I have it now. And I, I don't know, I was really um, nervous about doing the talk. And um, I thought, how am I going to time myself because I talk too much. So I figured at the end I would end with um, something that Ernest Holmes wrote, wrote. So on my trip through this, and when we were in Beyond Limits, we read through this book. And um, I thought it was a catchy title, How to Change Your Life. So one of the parts was about persistence. And I'll end with what he had to say about it. It says, be persistent. Even if this process does not seem to mean much the first day or so, keep at it. It involves changing your whole way of life, and it requires re-educating your body, your emotions, your intellect, and your spiritual outlook. Be fair to yourself. Keep on doing it. And I'll reread that for myself. Be fair to yourself. Keep on doing it. Plant deeply in your mind these basic ideas. You are completely surrounded by and are part of universal mind. Mind penetrates your very being. It is what you are. The mind is always creative, manifesting what you think and believe as form or as some experience. And lastly, universal mind answers to your mind. Mind creates for you according to the pattern you make for it by your thoughts of good or not so good. Your task, therefore, is to maintain only positive, uplifting, harmonious thoughts. So, like I said, you can't have it all, but you can have what you want. Thanks.